Ever wonder what it's like to chat with Elon Musk and ask him when is the latest Tesla coming out? I don't know when the next Tesla is coming out. Or perhaps what it's like to chat with Kanye West? The value of fresh human natural light and believe that we should prioritize these. Well, today I'm going to show you how you can make your very own AI chatbot utilizing the data that you pick. This means that you can talk to your PDFs, websites, YouTube videos, blogs of all the wise people that you don't have enough time to listen to in a day. And not only is this bot going to be able to converse with you, but it's also going to generate light to you in the voice of a famous person or a celebrity. And in order to build this AI chatbot, I'm going to use a very beginner friendly framework that can build chatbots in less than the time it takes to make a cup of coffee. Even if you're not a professional developer, after watching this video, you'll feel like you're not only watching AI innovation on YouTube, but you're also building them yourself. But first, why even build a chatbot? There are so many way more exciting things like autonomous agents, for example, AutoGPT or Baby AGR or GPT engineer. Well, according to Tidio in 2023, only around 90% of businesses were taking advantage of chatbots. Meanwhile, a whopping 62% were planning on jumping on this bandwagon. So what's even more interesting is that the majority of users uh, again, 62% of them to be precise, are ready and willing to chat with a chatbot. So with the rising tide of chatbot popularity, it's clear that they're the future for both businesses looking to scale and developers that are ready to build them. Which is why I think it's important to learn how to build your own chatbots. So let's dive in. But first, I want to remind you that I spend a lot of time working on these videos and if you like them, please don't forget to subscribe, like and comment because it definitely helps a lot. So in this video, I'll show you how to use EmbedChain, which is a framework built on top of another framework called LangChain. EmbedChain also uses LangChain to load your data, add it into smaller chunks, and finally index it. Then the uploaded data is turned into embeddings using OpenAI's ADA embedding model. Turning words into embeddings is essentially a process of transforming words into their numerical representation. This is usually an array of vectors and it's not two-dimensional, instead it looks more like this. And each vector represents an item or a word and similar words are clustered together. So once these embeddings are created, they're stored into Chroma, which is a vector database. So let's start with some code. So I'm gonna explain this part step by step so that even a total Python beginner can follow along. And if you're not a total beginner, I'm sorry if this tutorial is a little bit boring for you. Okay, and I'm also going to set a stopwatch so that we can see how much time it takes to create this chatbot. So first let's open a VS code and let's open a new terminal. Next in the terminal, I'll run a command pip3 install streamlet, which is going to be used for front end and embed chain, which you need to install in order to build your chatbot. Next, let's import an OS module, which we'll use to store an OpenAI API key in an environment variable. And also let's import a streamlet as ST. So in order to structure the code properly, let's write a main function. And this is where we're going to place the main part of the code. This weird syntax in the end ensures that the main function gets run when the script is executed. I start by using a streamlet component ST text underscore input. We can ask the user to provide your API key here. This is basically an, a regular input function, but this is what it looks like in the Streamlit front end. And if you set the type to password, then your API key is going to be safe from surroundings. Once the key is input, we are gonna check that the user has provided it and we're gonna set the environment variable OpenAI API key. And I want to mention that as of today, Embed Chain actually supports open source embeddings and LLM models, GPT for all, so you don't have to actually pay for anything. And in case the user didn't provide an API key, it, then we're gonna throw an error. The next bit of our code is where we ask the user for online resources. It can be a YouTube video link, a web page, or a PDF. Again, uh, I'll use a streamlit text input component and I'll store the data in appropriate variables. And these resources will be used by our bot to fetch data and answer users' queries. These are 
included the online resources, but you can also provide local resources like text uh, or pairs of questions and answers that you can hard code in your chatbots. Uh, for the purposes of this video, I'm going to skip that. We don't want to force our user to have to provide all three resources. Instead, let's ensure that at least one resource is provided using the Python's any function. This function is going to return a boolean expression so true or false value and if any of these resources is provided then it's going to the the code is going to proceed otherwise um, let's display an error message i'm going to check if the code is working by copy pasting my api key and a link to one of the elon musk's interviews and we can see that it works so moving on if the user has a valid api key and has provided at least one online resource we'll then import the embed chain and initialize our ai bot using the app class from embed chain library so next i'm going to create a dictionary that holds our resources it's going to hold a type of a resource so a youtube video web page or a pdf file and a link to the resource as well so in this part of the code i'm going to iterate through the dictionary and i'm going to add resources that have been provided embed chain has a add function and a query function when you type chatbots.add and then in brackets you can place two arguments one is a resource type and the other one is a link to the resource for every resource that the user has provided this chatbot is going to add it to add it to the database so once you've added all the resources then you can ask the user to provide the question again using a text input in uh, or a streamlet component for the text input i'm gonna have a submit button and when the user clicks on this button we're gonna send the query to the bot and display the return result and uh, sd the write component is going to write an answer and throughout the code uh, i have these error handling structures in place to catch any issues that might arise during execution because if you've had any experience uh, with streamlit you're going to notice that it's actually uh, hard to debug it sometimes this is what it looks like so far so if you ask a chatbot a question and it cannot find uh, the answer in the database that it created, then it's going to display a message like this. So that means that you just have to tweak a uh, query a little bit and it's going to work. So as you can see, I'm going to start the stopwatch right now and it takes less than six minutes to create this chatbot, which is, I think, a very short period of time. Since I want the chatbot to reply from a first person point of view, so that the user feels like they're talking to Elon Musk directly or another celebrity. So in order to make this happen, I'll just write a simple template prompt that embeds the user's query with a F string. And as you can see here, when I ask the chatbot directly, what do you want or what do you think about something is going to reply with, I don't know, or I think this, or I think that. So it's going to sound like you're directly talking to the celebrity or your database. Also, I'm gonna uh, include in the code a way to generate an image with Dolly, and we're gonna use the result that the chatbot has provided as an image prompt. But the results are really bad because Dolly isn't really that great at generating great images, but I'm gonna leave it and comment it out so that you can see how you can do it in case you're interested in something like that. And the last thing that i wanted to talk about is this function that generates text to speech i don't know when the latest test is coming up i'm gonna call it um get audio and it's going to take as arguments a response that the chatbot has provided and it's going to turn it into speech and i'm using a fake you service and you can check their celebrity voices database and pick the one that you like it's a very simple function i'm just going to include it in the code and you can you can check it out and uh, this is the final result. So that's it for today. Thank you for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video and see you in the next one.